Mayor and Council, this evening there is a couple of reports we'd like to share with you. Consistent with Council direction uh, to provide you with an update on our street and road repair maintenance program and activities. This evening we're providing you an update both of the capital improvement maintenance uh, program that Council initiated via the $2.5 million appropriation to go to improving our our road conditions and then the second update as part of the road maintenance update report is our local um, street repair program that our in-house crews are will begin undertaking and this is part of the street equipment that council authorized here earlier excuse me several months ago late last year for the ongoing in-house uh, street repairs of our city streets so with that we have glenn our interim public works director making the first half of the, re the report and then bill avila will talk about the local street repair program so with that glenn thank you gabe um yeah actually i'm just going to introduce the topic here and uh, david stubger will make the part on the capital project side of things and uh, bill will talk about the in-house program um, I just simply wanted to introduce the two of them, commend them for their work of putting this report together, and also say that I'll also be back to see you on the next item there, uh, the Measure B transportation tax, because uh, Christy has zero voice tonight and is under doctor's orders, literally, not to speak. So, uh, but I think that's pertinent because these two will be well interrelated also, as you will see as we talk about funding possibilities in particular. So. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to David to do the first part of this presentation, and I'll be back to answer any questions also. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, as Glenn said, we're here to talk about uh, pavement maintenance update. Uh, and the first part of that is there's two primary programs I'll be talking about number one the capital pavement and then Bill Avila will be talking about the second was local street repair program utilizing the equipment you had authorized before so the capital maintenance program just to define it are, are typically designed bid awarded by council and constructed by contractors the typical pavement maintenance project will, ex will extend the, the life of a street by uh, six or more years uh, by repairing failed areas, uh, increasing um, you know, ride quality and, and providing a new wear surface across the entire street and as well as we take advantage of this opportunity to implement the council adopted uh, complete streets program. Uh, and in the case of an asphalt overlay, which is uh, the, the most expensive uh, repair, ADA access ramps are also installed or repaired. When you're doing something like a, a slurry seal, that's not required. But we still try to incorporate it in our, our project whenever we can. Uh, Council approved an additional two and a half million for capital improvement maintenance back in June 2016. And these, we wanted to report that these funds are being used for phase one and phase two uh, capital uh, pavement maintenance program. Uh, combining the additional two and a half million granted by council with uh, 778,000 of other local accumulated pavement maintenance funds, the total project cost, and that means uh, design, construction management, and construction will be about three point, uh, just about 3.3 .3 million. Uh, so let's go over quickly uh, phase one. Phase one was awarded by council on November 7th and is currently <coughs> under construction. And the total project costs about 1.469 million. Again, that's construction, design and construction management. Uh, the original project, uh, first working day was January 24th and 45 working days in the contract. That would bring us to about March 29th unless there's weather delays. As we all know, there's been quite a, quite a bit of weather. Um, so that completion date might be pushed out. No, it won't necessarily be pushed out because the contractor doesn't have to take the full 45 days to complete. So it still may be done on time, but contractually it may be uh, the last day may be pushed out. 
The streets uh, in phase one and the treatments are listed here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read them all, but there's a, there's a mixture of asphalt overlay in certain areas, slurry seals, and cape seal. Our cape seal is, is a type of treatment. Uh, we've used it in the past, uh, like on the parking lot at Christmas Hill Park, but it's a chip seal covered by a slurry seal. I call it the poor man's overlay. It lasts, long, it lasts longer than a, a typical slurry seal, uh, but it's less expensive than uh, asphalt overlay. And uh, again, this is a mixture of, uh, of treatments. For example, in front of uh, El Roble Min uh, Elementary School, we, it was particularly bad. So we, we do a, a, a grind, it's called a grind and overlay. We ground off some of the asphalt and put a new layer of asphalt. Uh, so it would benefit that area. Uh, phase two is, is about 1.809 million. Uh, up there on the screen is a tentative phase two street list. So we've, we've looked at these streets and um, we'll get to how these streets were picked uh, in the next slide, I believe. But uh, this is what we've co come to so far and this, is this list is based on you know, the estimated treatment type and, and this, the area of the street segments and how much all that would cost. Uh, we anticipate this phase two work will go out to bid in April or May and begin construction in May or June of this year. So we get to the question of how streets and treatments are selected. As I've uh, reported to council before, we have a, a software called Street Saver and it uses uh, mathematical models and performs tens of thousands of calculations on how uh, how to best, with a given budget, how to best increase the average PCI and minimize deferred maintenance costs. Now that, the, uh, the program isn't a, isn't a person, it isn't an engineer, and we use engineering judgment to, to, we may, to modify that list. For example, if it gives one block in the north end of town, another block in the south end of town, that's not very convenient construction project. You want to have some maybe grouped a little closer together. Uh, and like in phase one, I, I picked a, a well burn between Hannah and Church because it was a very uh, poor condition yet highly traveled uh, road. So I added that, although I have to admit it wasn't on the list, but it was just a couple of blocks that, that really needed it that affect a lot of people. I took the opportunity to do that, but that's what I'm talking about, using an engineering judgment to modify that list. What do you mean it wasn't on the list? It wasn't originally selected to be on the list? It wasn't selected by the computer. Well, now, why is that? Because it, 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 it didn't uh, meet the criteria that the computer has. Again, I'm trying to point out that there's, there, you, you, have, you should up, sub, supply some engineering judgment to the list generated by the computer. No, I understand that um, what I, I think what that first bullet point is trying to talk about is that you're, you're picking streets where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck in terms of, of making the repair. And in fact, vis, vis, visually, it might not look like repairs are needed. But if you do some sort of overlay or some sort of repair, you're going to actually extend the life of the road, thus increasing the PCI over the long term. Um, but I'm surprised to hear you say that Wellburn from Church to Hannah was not on the list. I mean, I remember driving it and doing the pothole dance because you're trying to avoid right. those potholes. Now, last night, I happened to, to travel it. And I was just amazed at the remarkable job that, um, that uh, the crew had done to, to fix that whole area. I mean, it looks like a brand new street. Right. And so again, I go back to why, what, what happened that that particular street in such a poor condition was not put on the list? Yes, that, that's a very good question. And I've, I've, uh, I know this is a different council, but I've addressed that a couple of different times and it took like you know, half an hour to do it, but I'll try to, I'll try to uh, summarize it quickly, and, and you're exactly right, Mayor, that, the, that uh, maintaining a street that's in fairly good condition is, is cheaper and it extends the life better and it's a better investment. Uh, that's just the point, though. Uh, that section of Wellborn was so bad 
that it would, it's more expensive to, to treat it, to fix it, and you know, theoretically that money could have been better used uh, on other areas. Okay. On on better streets. So that that's that's what I'm looking for. So so according to the computer computer models, it it probably didn't pick that street because of the low let's for lack of a better term return on investment uh, right. for that particular street. But then you use your engineer <coughs> adjustment and realize that hey, this is a heavily traveled street. It needs to get fixed. We can't have this. So let's fix it. That's correct. Okay. And I. And I I'm thankful that you that you drove it and thought it was better because if it oh, if, yeah. if it <laughs> wasn't right. better, I'm in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, please continue. Okay. Sure. Um, let's see. Did I finish that? Oh, yeah. So um, that was the uh, the update on the on the extra two and a half million that the council uh, thankfully granted us, and and that was the first uh, bullet in the second slide. And so the second part is the local street repair program. Uh, utilizing equipment that council authorized purchase of and to talk about that we have Bill Avila who is the uh, interim uh, operations manager Bill Bill thank you for being here thank you so much um, good evening uh, mr. mayor and uh, council members um, I'd like to talk to you about our local uh, street repair program so uh, the local street repair program the work that would be uh, done um, on this program includes uh, removing and replacing distress, the failed areas of pavement, uh, filling in low spots to improve the ride quality, leveling courses with our new large uh, paving, uh, paving machine to improve ride quality, repairing potholes and crack sealing. Um, the local um, street repair program is intended to supplement the capital pavement maintenance program, not to replace it. Um, the condition assessment of how um, we did an evaluation, as we mentioned before, the city is divided into 18 uh, maintenance zones. Back in February 2016, uh, the initial behind the wheel pavement condition assessment um, inspection of each of the 18 maintenance zones was completed to get a baseline for each zone. Based on the overall condition of the zone, it was assigned an overall grade one, uh, one to five, one um, being it's in good condition and five being it's in the poorest condition. So out of the 18 zones, we have six zones or 33% which is in good condition. Five of our zones is in fair condition and we have seven uh, zones or 39% are in the poorest condition. Excuse me, can you just clarify, is the pavement condition assessment the same as the pavement condition index? Uh, or is no, it two no. different? Is it two different measures? Two different things. What this was is it was driving every single street within uh, a particular zone, and taking the information in, and then just giving it an overall grading. So it wasn't with pavement saver. It was just taking, uh, not street by streets, but kind of uh, calculating the whole zone and where the whole zone was at as far as what work needs to be done within the zone. So one is, <clears throat> one is a subjective. Yours is a subjective professional opinion. Correct. What Mr. Stobchair was referring to is a a repeatable study that can that's done with scientific analysis and computer aids and et cetera. Correct. Okay, thank you. So um, the local street um, repair schedule. So a seven-year local street repair schedule um, to address the 18 zones by the year 2023 is being proposed. Uh, zones 1A that has a grading of 3 and 6B that has a grading of 2 uh, for a total of almost 18 miles is proposed for the uh, first year to address these, these two zones. Um, they're in fair to good condition um, and the crews will need time to practice on the new equipment. After the first year, um, as the crew gains experience um, in the program, um, the zones with the poorest conditions will be addressed over the next three years. So from 2018 to 2020, the zones that are graded 3.5 or greater will be addressed according to the local street repair schedule. Um, this is an aggressive schedule. Uh, meeting the schedule depends upon the crew's uh, availability and, of course, adequate funding. So 
This is the overall city with the 18 zones that are listed. This is our zone map. So this slide illustrates, excuse me? Sorry, quick question. Can you, um, I know nothing about roads, so can you tell me what would categorize uh, a, a poor and a fair sort of zone? zone? So um, basically when I go through, and once again, it's just, it's just a drive-by. Right. Um, sometimes you have to go both ways depending on which way the light may be uh, facing right. to actually see the cracks. So it's evaluating. Uh, I'm not taking actual numbers. Yeah. It's just evaluating what I see as far as um, type of repairs, the amount of dig outs that need to be okay. done, the amount of crack sealing that may need to be applied right. um, for the overall zone, um, and then the other type of work that needs to be done, whether there's some small stamp work, mm -hmm. large um, um, type of um, leveling courses that need to be done. So it's just calculating and kind of getting an okay. assessment of everything that needs to be done, not just street per street, but the whole entire zone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you were to ask the community, it would say all of them are poor. Yes, but yeah, exactly. we know that, right? But yes. And then going back to the different types of seals, mm -hmm. can you explain the different, what, what that means, the different types? There's, you mentioned something. Chip seal versus slurry seal versus uh, oh, okay. cape so, seal. Yeah, thank you. So um, uh, just the, the, the type of um, treatments they are. Yeah. So a chip seal is you, um, it sprays down the oil. Right. And then right after that, you have aggregate rock that goes over it, and they need rollers to roll it, to roll it. So it's probably one of the cheapest ways, but you do have to gravel on the road. And, and um, so um, you get to be able to ride on the street immediately. A slurry seal is aggregate, uh, fine aggregate, and an, an emulsion that goes down. It goes down. You've probably seen it. It goes down brown, and when it breaks, it turns black. Right. Um, and then at intersections, at driveways, um, it needs to be sanded so people have access. But right. you can't drive on it until it finally breaks, so it does take a while for it to break. So the different seals, so for example, the, the cheap one would be like the car used to drive a Chevette way back when, right? The best one would be a, a Mercedes sort of, right? right? Why would we not go with the best seal to make sure that these don't occur, you know? I mean, because again, how long is the cheap seal going to really last? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm just if I may, Please. Um, just to make just to make clear what we're, what you were talking about right now is the capital side, yeah. okay. uh, and that's fine. So I just want to make sure we're on on the same page. Um, the as we talked about that program selects various treatments mm -hmm. along with which streets, and it and it makes all those calculations to see what's the best bang for the buck. Right. Um, we don't always go for the most expensive because you do the fewest number of streets that way. And say, uh, and, and we're getting back to the PCI rather than the grade, mm -hmm. and the PCI scale's a little different. It's 100 to zero, and 100 is a brand new road, and zero is what I call the Rubicon Trail. Right. Um, but um, if you have a PCI of, say, 70, and you, you want to maintain that, you might do the, the slurry seal. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's much less expensive, and you can do a lot more roads per for a given budget, right. and okay. it will raise and the, the high it will raise the PCI by more points than you would slurry seeing a uh, that old section of Wellburn because that's not going to do much good, but it right. does good on the roads that are in better condition. So we we take all that into account. The program takes into account as to which treatment is appropriate for which road based on what kind of condition it's in. Yeah, I, I know it's a budget issue, man, but I, I was just looking at it in the, the point of view if we're going to use sort of the, the lesser of the seal, you know, with all the rains and everything that we have going on, we don't know what's going to happen with the weather. How long will that seal last? Is it going to be a, a bigger problem down the road where we're going to cost us even more money to repair because we didn't use the, the better of the seals? Yeah. Council Member, if, yeah. if I might add a little clarification Please. on the types of seals also, it's not necessarily just a matter of cost, yeah. it's a matter of the applicability of a particular type of seal coat to a particular pavement condition. Okay. For example, a chip seal uses hot oil and then chips on top. That can actually work very well on a street that has some cracks in it because it'll start to fill in the cracks, it'll stabilize it for a period of time, not as good as an overlay, but cost effectiveness wise that can work. A street with a lot of cracks in it would be a horrible place to use a slurry seal because a slurry seal is actually fairly brittle when it hardens from its uh, set of, of the hydration of the water evaporating out. 
but if you have a street that is just raveled, which is where the surfaces start to worn away a little bit, and some of those gravels flaking off, but it's still structurally sound, a slurry seal is a very good application mm -hmm. in that kind of location. So this goes back to the engineering judgment, also that David was talking about earlier, and picking the right type of treatment for the right type of the street. And that's not always something the computer can do. That's something that has to be a matter of experience and education and judgment. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, please continue. Okay. Let me catch up to where I was at. <coughs> oh, no. No, no, no. Thank you. It's, they're all good questions. Thank you. So um, this is our schedule, um, our seven-year schedule. And if you notice the ones highlighted in green for 2017, those are the zones that we're um, proposing to do, which we mentioned was 1A and 6B. The ones that are highlighted in red, those are those seven that are in the poorest condition. And if you see through 2018 to 2020, with this aggressive schedule, we were looking to do those within the next three years after the initial uh, kickoff year. That, that, I, I don't understand that rationale. You have to help me understand that. Why are we delaying the worst, road, the, the worst roads, and why are we deferring that so, further, so much further down the road? Sorry, I didn't mean that as a pun, but if you look at this chart, okay, section uh, 7C, for example, has a 4, which is the worst rating according to your subjective viewpoint, right? Yet that's not going to be repaired until 2019. Why, why are we repairing a road that's 2, Line item 14, zone 6B, that's a two immediately. I, I don't understand that. Once again, it's the street repair, the street, sewer, and tree section. They have not had a lot of experience running a pavement maintenance program. So I have people that don't have experience doing asphalt work. So the first year was going to be to go ahead and get them trained, get them trained on the equipment, and get them trained on the procedures. Um, last thing I would want to do is to start off with the worst of the worst when the crew's not trained and ready to go for safety purposes and for efficiency purposes. So the reason that we're looking, doing it, looking at doing those is to get them up to speed with the new equipment, up to speed with the procedures and the program, and then start to address the worst of the worst. And if you notice, the first year we're Roughly about 18 miles is what we're scheduled to do. Over the next five years, we're ramping it up to roughly about 30 miles each, each year. So part of it is also figuring out, you know, not to take on too much over what we can do, but still be aggressive to, to get these done over the next uh, three years after the first year. That was the thought process. Okay, continue. So as uh, we mentioned with the, uh, the map color codes, um, and uh, the next slide actually shows the maps. Um, the green streets would uh, receive the local street repair uh, for the residential streets. Um, yellow streets were just suggested slurry streets. Doesn't mean that's the treatment that they're gonna get. Blue streets, meaning that they're streets in more uh, need of um, either a resurfacing or more extensive uh, pavement treatment. So I just wanted to just make it clear that only the, uh, the streets highlighted in green will be receiving the treatment under um, the local street repair program. Yellow and blue streets were beyond the scope of the local program itself. So this is the map where it has the blues, the yellows, and the green. So we would be focusing on the streets highlighted in green in zone 1A. And then the same for um, uh, 6, 6B. Um, the public outreach uh, contractor, in, in the case of capital uh, pavement maintenance projects, are the street section crews. In the case of the local program, will be distributing uh, notification letters or door hangers uh, to the residents within the areas where the work will be performed. The notification uh, letters or door hangers will briefly describe the work that will be um, done along with contact information. Um, and pending work uh, notifications will also be distributed through social media and the city website. Um, the initial project schedule would be posted uh, when it's available. And seven days uh, prior to the anticipation of the start of work, a notice will be sent out and 48 um, uh, hours prior to the work, uh, a reminder will also be sent out. Um, as far as the funding, uh, the local street repair program is a new program. 
So it doesn't have any existing uh, uh, budget. $100,000 was allocated from the capital pavement maintenance funds to fund a local program for the balance of uh, fiscal year 2017 for 2018 and every year thereafter. Staff estimates that additional $500,000 would be needed to meet the program's goal of doing all 18 zones within seven years. This will be in addition to the capital pavement maintenance funds. Uh, during the budget process, staff will present council with funding options uh, for the program, such as uh, Measure B. Hmm? Just jumping on something on that, that last point regarding Measure B. Uh, so as I understand it, with regard to Measure B funds for local street repair, if the city has a PCI average below 70, then that money has to be used for for street repairs only. And once you get above that PCI number, uh, then you have a little bit more discretion. Is that correct? Yes, council member, that, that is correct. Um, if I might suggest, we'll be talking about that in some detail in the next agenda item also, but you're, you're correct in what you state. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so for the next steps, uh, phase two capital um, pavement maintenance project, the uh, project design specifications, environmental documents are completed. The project and the bids will be brought to council for approval to uh, award uh, contracts, um, followed by the construction projects. Uh, local street repair projects will start uh, once we get the new uh, equipment has uh, arrived and the crews have been trained on how to operate the equipment. Uh, the scale, once again, for the local street repair is going to be depending on the level of funding um, it uh, receives. All right. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, let me turn it. Uh, let me see here. Public comment. Let me turn it over to the public. Anybody? Susan Mister. Want to speak on this item? I'm sorry, I'll make this really quick. I wanted to be home about an hour ago, but... Um, Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I saw the analysis for the poor, the fair, that the poor, the fair, the good roads, and that analysis was done in 2016. So my concern, council members and mayor, is this is a year later. I don't think those are accurate figures. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more in the poor. Um, anyway, I don't think it's going to be accurate. So I'm concerned not only from now, but until 2019, when we're looking at the worst roads, what the condition is going to be at that point, and if the, the, capital, the capital set aside uh, in 2016 will even cover what needs to be done through 2019 and how that works. Thank you. Thank you. Sean, anybody else? Okay, let me turn it back over to uh, council. Ron, you're not sitting in your chair. I wasn't planning on speaking. <laughs> I just want to uh, say thank you to the council. As we know, this has been a, a major issue for the city. And to purchase the, the equipment to do it on our own saves a lot of money. I'm glad that uh, we have some qualified people to actually do the job. I appreciate it. And uh, I think we can all see after this weather that we had this year that the roads are getting worse so to do it now and and um, before it even gets even worse it's, it's very good so i want to just say i appreciate your decision making on this situation thank you thank you um council let me turn it back over to you guys uh, any questions for staff <coughs> Uh, I did have a quick question. Um, are we doing curb repairs along with the street um, improvements, repairs, whatever we're doing? Thank you, Mayor. Um, we we look at uh, how the uh, curb repairs affect the, the pavement, such as uh, along um, Miller uh, Avenue, or I think it's Avenue, um, if, if a... Uh, tree has lifted up a curb and causes a bunch of ponding. Uh, if we, we can repair the, the pavement without addressing that, but it'll just pond and ruin the pavement again. So we, 
we at least try to address the worst of the, of the curb repairs, and we also try to take care of, as I mentioned, the ADA access ramps at the same time if, there, if there's a drainage issues around there as well. Okay, so you're looking at curb gutter ADA in terms of drainage? Primarily, yes. Okay. I guess my, my, I guess there are some things I should not say, so never mind. Okay. Um, I did have another question. With regards to Wellburn, um, I was, again, driving down that one section, it looked great. A little further down, though, I saw, uh, this is heading east now on Wellburn, so just past, I guess, Hannah. I saw what, what I would describe as a, a narrow trench, like, on the road, in the road. And I think you guys know what I mean. When, you know, the cars are traveling, they hit this low spot in the road. It creates almost a, a, a gutter, if you will. It's kind of um, got some alligator cracking going on inside this, this gutter. And then there is a pothole in the middle of this gutter. The pothole looked like it was filled. My question is, and so thank you for that, but my question is, why not, and again, I don't know anything about roads, but my question is, why not fill, fill that gutter so that it now becomes level with the entire road? What, what, what am I missing? Is there, there, there has to be a reason why staff is going there and just filling the pothole and not filling essentially this little trench or, or gutter that was created. Is this, is this, this is not at an intersection, this is just a it's in the middle of the road. in the pavement? Yes. So First off, is my example, does it make sense? Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about and I know the location uh, out in that area. So basically what we've been doing right now, because we don't have our hot patch truck, is uh, we're filling um, the potholes because there's more potholes. So we're trying to fill, address all the potholes. And that's why the pothole was taken care of, but not that rut area. Uh, once we get the patch truck and we, you know, we could go ahead and that was part of the thing is to be able to address some of these in a more of a permanent type of basis with hot mix. Cause you can't put cold mix or cut back mix and something like that. It would pop up real quick. A lot of times it needs borders to go ahead and, you know, be able to sustain for it for a while before the rains come and get underneath it and kind of pop it out again. Okay. So, no, I, I just, I knew there was probably a reason. I just didn't understand what it was. Yes. Um, and then with regards to uh, the potholes themselves, um, when you're filling in the hole, do you tap it down? Do you do whatever to make sure that, one of the things that uh, I've already started to hear some people saying, asking questions is, you know, make sure that it gets compressed or tapped down because what you don't want is to put something in there, then have the cars drive over it, and suddenly it pushes down this, you know, your, what you just filled, and now you've created a little... Um, depression. Depression now. Yeah, so, so the crew should be tamping it down, and they also should be a wheel rolling it with, with, with their vehicle. Okay. Just to go ahead so they, they could go ahead and... Uh, and know, if you could it. follow up and make sure that's happening. I, I would definitely follow up to make sure they're following that uh, procedure as well. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Council Member Tovar. Thank you. Um, thank you again, gentlemen, for, for this report. Um, just sort of reading this, it's a seven-year schedule that we've laid out here, right? But, it, but in five to six years, obviously, there's going to be more repairs. So in reality, it's, it's a work-in-progress schedule, yes. right? Um, but currently, the 18 zones, for, for us to get to that completion point, it's going to take seven years to get to that point. Yes. And I, I, just, I just want to be very clear on it because I don't think the communities will understand why it takes seven years for us to get all these repairs done. I think maybe... If yeah, well, part of it is, uh, and, and you're right, yeah. once we do the repairs this year on the zones, right. and we're hoping we don't come back if we're on that seven year cycle for you know the next the next right. seven years um you you will have it's just like anything pavement right. maintenance is a, is ongoing it's right. not a one-time thing you know th there's going to be other things when you get back into that zone right. after whatever your cycle is that you're going to need you're going to need some repairs um, one of the things is is going by our workload matrix because the street sewer and tree section is really responsible for everything right. that gilray uh, the services that they provide except for for the parks and landscape areas yeah. and, and water. So graffiti, signs and markings, tree work, 
um, you know, sewer lines, right. sewer repair, sewer, sewer lighting cleaning. Right. So it's really balancing that out as, as, as well. So we're not a full-time pavement maintenance crew only that does that stuff all year long except for the winter time. Um, so oh, and that, that's good. I wanted I wanted that to be clear because again, I know that's the question that we're going to be asked as council members. Well, why is it taking seven years to fix my road? I I actually think that um, this comes from a comment that Council Member Bracco had made, and I I, I agreed. Is uh, years ago, the city of Gilroy used to be on a seven-year pavement cycle, so that all our streets would get some sort of treatment and um i think i mean it was seven year cycle that was right? explained to us that every time you treated it it added seven years to the life of the road so as long as you kept it up every seven years the road would pretty much last forever and so for whatever reason there was uh past councils just somehow this this yeah. kind of fell and so this was council member brocco's attempt to try to get the program started again yeah. And I think what I'm hearing from city staff is here's a proposal to, right. to start that. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day, there's going to be some policy questions for the right. council. I mean, are we going to be able to afford this? Exactly. Yeah. But, you know, staff right now is bringing a proposal forward. Can I ask one question is, and then in addition, if, if once we start, if we, when, if and when we start this, if we do the first phase of the repairs and two years late down the road, those initial repairs that we made, for some reason they deteriorated or something, do that, they go back, are they a priority or do we continue with our schedule and, you know, let them be, does that make sense? Well, I would hope that's a question right. we never have to right. answer. Right, right, I, 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 same I here, but I just want to. But I think the answer to that question is we'd have to go back and reevaluate the condition right. of those streets versus the other streets that haven't been treated yet yeah. and see which one gets the higher priority. Yeah. I would hope and, and, and want to offer, you know, the best assurances that I can that I can't imagine a street that was just worked on two years ago right. could possibly be worse than something that hasn't been worked on for seven, ten, or, or fifteen years. So I I, I really hope that's just no, and I, I do too. I, I, like I said, I just ask these questions because I think sure. that's the number one question I get asked by the community. No, that's so fair. I just want to make sure I have answers for them as well. That's why. Thank I, you. I just also wanted to follow up a little bit on on the previous question and, and, and on Bill's response too. Um, you know, it, it really is an ongoing process. It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You're never done, right? right? You finish, you go back, you start over again, and the seven year cycle is right on. You know, it, I've seen that in, in many other cities. Uh, Santa Clara does that with Slurry Seal, for example, on their streets. And that it's a pretty good standard if you can get to the point where your streets are yeah. solid enough to be able to maintain that, it's the right place to be. A absolutely so. And, and in, in that regard, you know, I, I've only been here since late December, early January, but what I've seen so far in the previous decisions the council made to fund the $2.5 million to fund the new equipment, I think you're really headed in the right direction to get these things back on track. Mm -hmm. It, it's not done yet. There's more need, but but it's certainly headed in the right direction. You know, and I thank you. And I thank you for your explanation as well. That this is not a full-time crew. That they're just doing roads, roads, roads. It's again, we're we're working little by little. So appreciate that. Thank City you. Administrator Gonzalez. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Tovar, Mayor and Council. Just to add to uh, what uh, Glenn has said. The goal is to we're going to take the first year or two to establish our baseline year to look at efficiencies, time. We're also taking into consideration that it'll probably take about that one or two years to get our city crews proficient with our equipment. This is a new new program, new equipment they're going to be utilizing. Um, so we're looking at the first year, first couple years established at baselines to really create some uh, some data points in terms of cost for material, uh, amount of time that we do certain type of repairs on certain streets, uh, amount of time that our, our city crew is able to spend on, on these streets. And the goal is that with time, as they become more proficient, we'll increase that cycle because they'll know the pattern down and we'll have a lot of that data points back. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Harney. Yeah, if I could just make a few comments. Thank you. Thank you for the comprehensive report and for the um, remedial review, uh, Mr. Staub Chair, on PCI and, and what it means to maintain roads. It's always fascinating. And I did get your, your joke about the Rubicon Road. So thank you. That was a good one. <laughs> I picked that one up. It was fantastic. Um, 
uh, just just a comment on the on the report here. <clears throat> In the future, you know, slide I don't know page fifty one. The, the the image quality is really really poor. We can't zoom in and zoom out, so it's very difficult to tell which roads are are being done. And you almost have to do a little bit of deduction with with the table on page fifty two and then the maps. I guess one one concern I have is that the um, we have constraints, a hundred thousand dollar constraint. So I appreciate that. We have constraints with um, uh, the proficiency of the of the road crew who has to learn a new skill essentially and make sure we're doing it safe, so that we don't um, impact our our experience modifier. My concern is the two zones that have been selected are on the west side, and the areas that need the most work are on the east side. And I don't, I don't know how I'm going to be able to answer that question, uh, other than our crew isn't proficient in repairing roads yet. Uh, even if we would have started on the east side of town with, with a zone that was perhaps you know 2.0, I think it, 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 would, it would provide a unity to the community that one side isn't getting more service than another side. Last week, we had a discussion about Upper Welburn and there was complaints and, and the dispatch covered it and <clears throat> there's issues that oh look at those rich people again on the west side getting all the services and all the attention of the city and when I look at this plan I, I know the constraints I understand them um, but I, I would have hoped that we we could have spread out the love if you will in in getting our roads repaired good, good. I understand exactly what you're saying, and we can make an adjustment to that to make sure we have at least one zone on the east side of town and one zone on the west side of town. Um, yeah, I think that would be a little bit more representative, and I think it would also um, it would appeal to a, to a much broader audience. So if you could, cons I know we're just receiving the, the report today, and there's no decision to be made, but um, I want to make sure that the council is doing everything that we can for the entire city and not just one one quadrant. I, I would only add, though, that while I'm sympathetic to what Mr. Harney is saying, I want us to be able to stretch this two and a half million dollars as far as possible. And so I don't know, I would leave it up to the staff's discretion to identify the roads, whether it's on the east side or on the west side, to make sure that we could, we, we could stretch this money as far as possible. I don't want to fix a particular section of road that even in the last staff report said all we're really going to do is increase um, road rideability and not necessarily fix the, the infrastructure problem that's there. So I just want us to be sensitive, sensitive to what Mr. Harney is saying about you know trying to balance it out in the community, but let's not throw good money to try to solve something because we're trying to fix a particular section of town, um, if that makes sense. You know, let's, let's use some discretion there. With, with those there. comments, I, I, if I may add, again, we only have so much funds. Yes. And as uh, Councilman Mahoney said, I mean, you see where the uh, priority is. If we run out of funds, then going back to his comments, yes. then we've neglected to help the side of town that really needs yeah. the repairs. So again, I did, I, I understand what um, the mayor is saying, but I also looked at it this way. You know, I think we have to be, you know, again, like he said, spread the love because my concern is if we run out of funds saying, what well, we'll get to you when we have funds. And I think again, we've neglected the side of town. I guess my, my point though is, let's say, uh, let's say on a particular place in town, you have a PCI of 50. Mm -hmm. And if you do a road repair, you've now increased it to 55. Mm -hmm. Well, that's still not at our 70. But if we could get another section of town that is at 65 and get it to 70, and now we've got it based out and, you know, it's going to last a while, that is probably a better investment for us. That's all I'm getting at. I, I want to be sensitive to certainly the council and certainly to the comments about uh, reaching out to the entire community. That's all, that's all good. So Mayor, anyways, I'm, yes. I'm sorry. City uh, Administrator. Clarifying uh, a question here. Um, I understood from Councilmember Harney that when he mentioned zones, it was for the local street repair, not part of the capital improvement. To look at a zone in the east side that's part of the local street repair program that's 
the second half of the report and not the capital improvement. The capital improvement program Got it. Got gave it. it as administering. So I just want, I want to get clarification on that. Yeah, that, thank you for, for asking that question because I don't want to cause confusion to the staff. Um, what Mr. Avila presented was the road maintenance program, which has $100,000. So zone 6B and zone 1A is what's proposed to spend $100,000. And what I'm proposing is that we go back and we, re we review the table, the pavement maintenance zone order table. I don't know what page that is on your, on your presentation, but maybe you could bring that up. And, and ensure that one zone is on the east side mm -hmm. so that we have, there, there are the two zones, zone 1A Can you zoom that? and zone 6B. That's what's proposed to be spent, to have the $100,000 spent, correct? And then if you go to the table, there you go. That table, it's, if you go one page up, I think there's a map on there. Yeah. It's right. very difficult to know which streets they are, but it looks like 4A and 4B are the east side of town. And those two geographic areas or zones are not covered by any of the road maintenance program. Mm -hmm. For 2017, and what I would like to propose is that we review that and ensure that some roads in those neighborhoods are repaired yes. or, or part of the main maintenance program. Yes, I think there are opportunities to do that. Um, and I think there are opportunities to do that that will satisfy the question about using the money still in a cost-effective manner. I think we can come back to you on that later as part of the budget process. And I need to make the point that was made in the discussion about funding that we only have $100,000 right now that right. we've managed to find in the existing budget. And in order to do all of those two zones even, we're going to need more funding starting July 1. And so we'll have to come back to you as part of the budget process. We'll have to ask you, you know, to consider funding as a part of your priority package. And that will be the opportunity to decide where and how we can spend those monies to satisfy these questions that are being asked right now. So the, the point of clarification, zone 1A and 6B, those aren't fully funded maintenance programs? No, we're, we're only partially funded for startup operations this fiscal year once the new equipment gets here. And we need more money even to finish those two zones. That, if, you, that, if, you, if you read what was in the memo, we need about $500,000 per year to do the zones per year that we want to do of about two and a half, 2.6 zones per year. This goes back to my point about making sure we stretch the money we have as far as possible. Yeah, no, I understand, yeah. Um, so what are we getting for the 100,000? Because my, my assumption reading the memo, and I've, I've read it, Mr. Stobchair knows I love roads and getting our roads fixed and I really want to champion that cause. My, when I read that, I, I read that we're repairing 6A and, and those, those, two, those two on the map, that's not the case? We, we're not fully funded for those two zones, no. Okay, so what are we funded for? We're funded for as far as $100,000 goes between now and July 1. Have you, can you be a little bit more precise on the maps? So, um, brand new program. It, there's no funding existed for it. As we mentioned, uh, we went ahead and deferred $100,000 from the capital maintenance program to get us started and to close out this fiscal year. So um, the $100,000 doesn't cover, you know, all the maintenance that would be needed in uh, both of those zones. It's just to close out, to get us started for this fiscal year and close out this fiscal year. So July 1, that's what we were talking about, coming back with some funding options that we would be presenting council. Um, at that particular point to go ahead and uh, see about fully funding it, that we could go ahead and do those um, 18 zones within seven years. So we don't know what roads we're going to have repaired this year. And, and Mr. Mayor is going to have coffee with the, the constituents on Saturday, and they're going to say, I hear we're getting all these roads repaired for 100 grand. And he, how does he answer that question? How do I answer that question? Forget him. What about me when I'm at Knob Hill or Safeway? 
uh, or, or, or Mi Pueblo, and somebody says, hey, what roads are being repaired? I don't know. I, I think at that point what we have to do is go back to the fact that the commitment of spending the $2.5 million that council previously authorized and directed is being met, those streets are being done, and that's what we can say is a definite commitment that is being met. As far as starting up a new program, which this is, that's a different question, and we don't have all the answers to that yet. And I don't think there's been any public commitment to anything specific that's shown on that map. To the best of my knowledge, having been here since early January, that is the first time this kind of information is being shown in a public session. Yeah, I don't believe there's any prior history of commitment about that. And this goes to the point, again, earlier that I making, was making about you know, Council Member Bracco, it's the idea of establishing a program, a seven-year program. Ultimately, it's going to become a policy decision of the council as to whether or not we're going to be able to fund this. And so, you know, thankfully, staff is putting forward a proposal, and then we're certainly going to have to look at, you know, how important is this to us that, you know, if it's important, then we're going to have to fund it. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to uh, Council Member Bracco. Yes, it, as you were saying, Mayor, you know, we used to be on a seven-year schedule, and in the downturn, um, they took that money and used it for other things. And now we're trying to get back on that schedule. We, I think we've made some big steps here with buying our own equipment, hiring people that can fix our roads to save us money. But... I would caution council about trying to micromanage and tell our staff which streets they need to fix. They, they've went out, they've done their surveys, they, they have their computer survey, uh, they've driven the streets. I, I think we need to yield to their expertise on, on uh, it, it's not about one side of town versus the other. Our last major uh, street repairs were in the east side. We redid all of Forest Street. We redid all of Sixth Street. We put all new lights. You know, so Eagle Bear. Yeah, yeah, you know, so we we have done uh, different areas of town, and just driving around this past week, seeing where you guys are repairing, it's all over the place. It, it's in different areas of town. So I, I think we're on the right track. I mean, we're just barely getting started. I, I think by the end of summer, you're going to see that we've really made an impact. So that, that's what uh, I would suggest. Thank you. Uh, and Council Member Tovar. I, and, and again, I thank you for those comments. And, you know, I would respectfully disagree regarding we're not asking for expertise. We're just saying we want to be sensitive to that part of town as well. And I understand there's some repairs that have been made, but... That's been the issue year after year after year is the side of town feels that they're neglected, that they're not a priority in the city. And again, not to say that we're going to change everything. It's just that let's just be sensitive to both sides, you know, the entire community, you know. And if that means that we adjust our schedule a little bit, then again, I think that we owe it to that side of town as well. So I'm not saying we change everything, scrap everything. I'm just saying that let's look at where we're at, what we have, and if we can satisfy the entire uh, community, I think we're better off if we do that. Thank you. Um, let's go back to Council Member Harney, I guess. Yeah, thank you. I, I, Council Member Brocco, I, I couldn't agree more, right? We've got professional staff that are paid to do this. This is their profession. This is what they're designed to do. I'm not, I'm not arguing or, or trying to articulate that we should micromanage them, not, not even close. But, you know, when, when I agendized this at the beginning of the year, what I wanted was a clear path forward so that we could communicate to the community what roads were going to be repaired and when. And that's what I haven't got answered. And that's what my issue is. My issue is I can't go out today and tell the constituents what roads we're going to repair. Now, staff is going to argue that, well, that's because we don't have the funding for it. Well, um, what comes first, the, you know, the chicken or the egg, <laughs> right? We bought, we spent a lot of money buying the capital equipment 
we spent a lot of time and, and uh, of staff's time putting together the this plan and now I don't understand why we don't have a at least a preliminary schedule to say first hundred thousand are going to cover these roads and should we get funding and approval we're going to cover these additional roads so that we can go out and we could we could market the hell out of our public works and road repair department because that's really what it comes down to is having having pride in our city repairing our roads maintaining them and advocating the city staff that's working really hard to to improve the quality of life for everyone so that's where i'm coming from it's not at all a, a criticism whatsoever it's it's help me help you type of a situation and i'm not in that position right now all right so we're going back and forth here let's uh we got a couple more speakers and then let's try to wrap this up because all we're doing is receiving this report um city administrator gonzalez sir mayor and council um following up to the discussion um we can go back and to provide council with a, a report of the number of streets um as staff has uh, indicated the hundred thousand is through the remainder of the fiscal year part of the the when the council directed my myself to agendize this um I think it was Councilmember Brocco who also wanted to know what, how much money we might need for the program to keep it going. So <clears throat> part of that staff report also included that, and that is that as staff has calculated, um, going back to the staff report, is for 17-18, there's an additional $500,000 request we will be making as part of the budget. If you want to have a success, the, the program in a seven-year period, that's how much more it's going to take into 17, 18. Now that doesn't mean that all the, all that remaining work is going to get done in the, this, in this summer, rather that also covers next season when the weather gets better. Because again, as staff has said, we got to train up our crews. It's a new program that we're not, even if we had the approximately 600,000, we may not even get to both zones in the summer months, which is the appropriate time to do the program. So <clears throat> the additional $500,000 request will be as part of the budget for 17, 18, that will cover both this summer and part of next spring when the weather allows us to uh, restart the program. So so that's what we're looking at in terms of that funding. So if there's any miss, not misinformation, but if it wasn't clear in the staff report, then I just want to provide that, that clarification. <clears throat> And we'll provide you with a list of what streets would would be covered under the hundred thousand to initiate that program. It, just if I may, just really quick for clarification, and do we include something a zone in the east side or not? Because that was still also uh, something that was mentioned. So I just want to get clarification, so that as we go back and look at the two zones that per staff proposed. That that's what we're going to go with, or do you want us to look at something else? So I just want to get clarification. Well, we don't even have enough money to do one of those zones, correct? Well, correct. Correct, but he's talking about uh, adding it in uh, five hundred thousand in this as part of the seventeen eighteen fiscal seventeen year. budget. So he's trying to say on a on a go forward basis, what's the will of the council? Do we go with what is it six B and one A right now, correct. or? Do we take one of those out and add in another zone from the, the east side? I'm in favor of option two. Yeah. Um, Council Member Klecker. <clears throat> Clearly, <clears throat> we need to know what streets we're going to get repaired for the 100,000. I was under the impression that the two zones would be completed. Um, but we need to get good clarification on that. <clears throat> Secondly, regarding Councilman Bracco's comments, I'm reminded of a former council person several years ago who said, don't design the project at the council table. It's up to the staff. So let's let the staff do what uh, needs to be done as far as selecting the roads. And uh, if, if we can do it in, uh, in other parts of the town, great. But primarily, I'm looking to the staff to select the roads that need to be done based on their best information or computers or models or whatever thank you all right um so uh staff is looking for some clarification uh what's the will of the council do we want to um have staff come back with a a um 
an alternate zone identified for council consideration? Yes. Yes? Yes. Mr. Arney, you're okay with that? Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, ask staff. So we're gonna accept this report. It doesn't require any kind of uh, uh, council action other than we accept it. And then we will ask staff to come back with, um, with an alternate zone for the council mm -hmm. to consider along with uh, 6B uh, and 1A. And then at that time, we could decide how we wanna proceed. All right? Just, uh, I'd like to, make a suggestion and we're bringing this item back if we're able to look at the remainder of the year based on staff's cap capacity to do more work than the hundred thousand because a hundred thousand goes pretty quick on you know material so would council be okay if staff also as part of that item coming back included possibly a budget amendment that we would be able to take additional months out of the general fund granted if staff determines that we have capacity for a little bit more work it could be one of those things that we can add some more money we can get to it great um but that way we're not limited to just a hundred thousand just a thought no, that sounds good i want to see them out there every day of sunshine is sunny. <laughs> <laughs> all right good enough then so all right thank so you that was yes good. so so the council's clear on what the city administrator is requesting all right good let's move forward um